Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. People keep talking about the opioid epidemic. They keep spending money on it. They keep sending resources to fix it. And it just keeps getting worse. What went wrong? What's going wrong? To answer that question is Lynn and Daniel Regan, friends of ours and founders of CFC Loud and Clear. They are on the front line in fighting this epidemic. Thank you both for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Lynn, I'll start with you. What is going wrong? Uh, what's going wrong? Well, you know, in, in our organization, we're boots on the ground. So we start from a very organic pr perspective. And um, we meet the family. The, it, there's so many layers to addiction. It, it can't just be answered with one remedy. It's not just detox. It's not just treatment. It, it's the aftercare that's so vitally important for long-term successful recovery. And, and, and that's what's missing. So the system is broken. And we've created a new system. And, and, and we're hoping that that, that um, way of, of treatment is, is considered a, a model program that extends out long term with accountability and commitment and compassion. So I take it from it. what you're saying is that what you're doing is working. Yes. What the state and what the federal government is doing is not working. Well, I would like them to make some changes. And so what, some of what they're doing is working, yes. Daniel, what are they doing that's not working? Well, the, the problem is, is that the, uh, the view of someone coming out of treatment, what happens to a person out of treatment, is something that is completely overlooked and underserved. Um, we have a lot of governments that uh, our government keeps creating programs that are really just resources. They're, they're resource programs. So there are websites or call centers. There are mobile trucks that go out and hand out flyers. Okay, that, that is the start of helping someone, yes. But oftentimes you're handed a flyer and then you call that number on the flyer, or you call that, uh, that center, the call center, and they tell you, keep calling back every Thursday because we don't have a bed for you. Okay. Once you, if you miraculously get that bed, you're usually given a short detox, possibly some 14 days, possibly 30 days in some kind of inpatient residential program. From there, you're put back on the street. You're told to do 90 meetings in 90 days. And most oftentimes, you're probably going to need some kind of sober, uh, sober living environment. But the problem is with that is that our state restricts that also. Um, they, they make you jump through a million hoops to try to get a sober living open. So there's not enough beds in sober and living. And you went either. through all this, right? This is Absolutely. exactly what you went through. We should yes. point out we that you were an addict. Yes, we are a product of the yes. broken system. Uh, and that we, famously, your mother went out to Los Angeles to, to basically kidnap you and get you treatment and now look at you now. <laughs> so you have a success story, so you know what it takes. Absolutely. First hand. From, Many tears. But uh, the, what he just said a moment ago is not having the beds. Yes. I, I keep hearing that over and over yes. again, and it's, it, it, is, it makes you a little bit angry because you know so much of our money is being spent on yes. this at the state level, at the local level, and at the federal level. And if the money isn't buying something as necessary and as simple as beds, yes. then what's it being used for? Um, it's making payroll is what it's doing. It's creating departments and making payroll for people. It's creating jobs and departments and making government agencies bigger. And it's not getting to the people. And that's what the people are so angry about. You know, when we first started this, we go to the grocery store, we go to churches, we go to help people at commu free community events, because that's where the people are that need help. Um, and, and, and that's not what's being done. Um, and and the, the funding is, is scarce. You know, uh, most people, you know, like as a nonprofit, we struggle always. You know, it, it, people like to give to fuzzy puppy dogs um, over a drug addict that's in recovery. Yeah, but, they're, 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 but it's, that, that, that's changed. The image has changed because I think so many people have been affected by this. As well, I've said a million times, if you haven't been has, affected yet, you will be. Yeah. It hasn't? No, and not in terms of uh, private donors. Um, yes, there's a lot of grants that have opened for the opioid epidemic, mm -hmm. but you have monsters like government agencies, hospitals, these, these very stout programs and organizations that are able to gobble up all this government money and federal funding. Uh, and what happens is, is that it goes really absolutely nowhere. Well, let's yeah. try to help a little bit yeah. because since you're not getting government funding, you have to get, you have to be self-funded to a point. You have a big event coming up. We when is do. it and what is it? We do. It's called Rock the Farm. Um, it's rockthefarmnewjersey.com. 
and it is an enormous music fest. We drew uh, probably 7,500 people last year. We're expecting probably about 8,000, 8,500 this year. Um, and it's a tribute band uh, music fest, the best of the best. And I know you um, memorize the bands. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> like, what, what, what were the bands? We have Livewire, who is a tribute to ACDC. We have a decade that, a decade that is a tribute to Neil Young. Free Fallen, which is a tribute to Tom Petty. I know one. Uh, Tusk. 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 Fleetwood yeah. Mac. I remember Mac. that. And, and many, many more. Uh, it is a fun-filled day for all generations. Last year, we had grandmas dancing with grandchildren in the foam machine uh, while, while Pink Floyd was playing yeah. in the background. It, Food it, trucks, it, vendors, Bill where Spadia. Is it? Where is it? Right uh, on from 101.5. Yeah. And Chasing New Jersey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and where is it again? It's in Seaside on Grant Avenue, um, between the beach and Grant Avenue. And you can get tickets ahead yes. of time? Mm -hmm. Yes. How, would you, how do you do that? Rockthefarmnj.com. And you, there's a, right there you, you can, can purchase yep, the tickets? Yep, you can purchase a ticket. And all proceeds from this event go back into our program. And, and um, let me, I didn't yes. ask the most basic question in the beginning because I wanted to get right into the problem. <laughs> what is your program? Go ahead, so you're the CFC Loud and Clear is filling in the gaps. We are the only true relapse prevention program that uh, creates a sober community for individuals that are coming out of treatment. And we're able to give that person the necessary life skills, structure, and support for them to be able to find and maintain long-term recovery. And we do that with several different programs. Which is modalities. crucial, right? Because so many people go and get the initial recovery and then fall right it's back the into the same. Right, 30 I, days of treatment does not fix No, this I hear it over and over again. Start. Where do you go for yeah. the tickets one more time? To, to uh, rockthefarmnj.com. Great. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Larry. It's good to have you thanks, in again. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks a lot, us. Daniel. Lynn and Daniel Regan, co-founders of CFC Loud and Clear. Jersey Matters continues right after that. When we come back, did Americans actually eat healthier back in the 18th century? Dawn takes us back in time to find out. <laughs> 